All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, and Karak with Dash. I want to say your double honors to the apostles and the bishop, elders, a great millstone for teaching his word in truth and sincerity, and for ruling well, and salutations to the elect, more well, and where some of those men and women, those that believe and fear the Lord. Hey, I'm a brother, Gabar Yahweh from GMS Hawaii coming to you with another lesson in this lesson um, I just got this picture up there because I wanted something to kind of illustrate you know what's coming to this world and nuclear destruction is coming to this world right and this world war is going to destroy all these nations are going to end up destroying themselves and then ultimately how shy the son of the living power how is coming back and he's going he's going to he's going to destroy these the, uh, the nations and their armies okay and there's not going to be any room for any of these nations to uh, buck up against the Lord. Nobody's going to buck up against Yahweh Shai, man. All right. You know, uh, there's this thing where uh, this guy, uh, Hassad, you know, he kind of believes that, you know, Russia's going to rule a little bit. It's going to be an insignificant rule. That's not going to happen. You know, um, Nate, uh, Bishop Nate teaches that, uh, you know, Gog is going to come back up and uh, with some weapons. And they're going to go to war with Israel or Yasha Allah. That's not going to happen. This world, this world war that's about to take place, okay, is going to destroy these nations. It's going to cripple uh, um, each of these nations that's involved and even the nation that's not involved. All right? Because this is the Lord's will. All right? The Lord has created these weapons and these, he put the spirit on these scientists, these uh, particular groups like DARPA these uh to create weapons of pretty much mass destruction right because this is a part of the, the second death all right real quick this is the book of isaiah <clears throat> excuse me the book of isaiah okay uh isaiah 9 and 5 for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. So, you know, all these previous wars they've had on this earth, men men basically went head up. You know, they rolled their garments up. It was it was bloody. All right, and that's how most wars are fought. And then obviously with the advent of technology, now you you add in technology, uh, missiles, uh, drones, and all that other kind of stuff. But this one, this this war. Even even World War Two, I think I believe they still was using the bayonet. You know what I'm saying? So they would shoot and they would run up on you and stab you, or they, um, you know, it was a lot of explosions. Tanks were in the mix of it, and I believe fighter jets came into the existence during World War Two. I could be wrong, but um, the point of the matter is this: this this last war is going to be fought with the fuel of fire, right? And that that fire is coming from these nuclear weapons. All right, so when you read <clears throat> um, Ezekiel 38, it's just pretty much the Lord prophesying against Gog, all right, the prince of Meshach, to get ready for this war that's about to happen. All right, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. Chapter 38, and um, I'll start at the top. It says, prophesy against Gog, the future invasion of Israel, because ultimately... How 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 Russia is going to get into this third world war is they're going their 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 major theater going to be over there in the Middle East, all right. Something's going to happen where I don't know what I don't know how, but something's going to happen with these small hats going in sight uh, of the third world war, and it's going to bring America into it because America is joined unto the state of Israel by the hip. Okay, it's basically the sponsor. <laughs> it's basically the sponsor for. Uh, for uh for the state of Israel, okay, so, um, but that's also going to draw America and its allies. Then along with America and its allies, you're going to have Russia and its allies, and they're going to go to war against that state. All right, Slacky, and they're going to go to war against the state of Israel along with America, right? And ultimately, that's going to bring in this great destruction of this country, America, North America. All right via nuclear weapons okay this is, so this is ezekiel um 38 and one now this the future invasion of israel is not talking about um you know when we get in the kingdom and 
we're establishing it. Ain't gonna rush it. Step no, 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 no. It's talking about in this war because this is what's gonna culminate again. This is what's gonna culminate, or it's gonna um, introduce the hot war, which is the World War Three. So it says Ezekiel thirty-eight one, in the word of Yahweh, Bashan Yahweh Shai came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against God, the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against them. Right? So we're prophesying against the leader of that land of God, which is Russia today. Right? Look at God on a map. On a biblical map. Okay? You look at God on a biblical map. Okay? And it's modern day uh, Russia. Yeah, right here. That's good. That's good. Right here. This is modern day Russia. Right, so this is for Russia is a semi war power. You know, it is a war power. You know, and America don't want to go too deep in the Middle East because they know that it's going to draw, especially particularly going to uh, Iran, because that's one of, of the state of state. Of, that's one of the, uh, Russia's uh, major allies. Right, <clears throat> that's why you keep hearing about Persia, 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 which is Iran today. Right, so it says, Son of Man, set thy face against God in the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and prophesy against them and say thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashiachai behold I am against thee O God the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws and those hooks were there's a symbolism of power remember at one point uh, the USSR collapsed I think like the late 80s early 90s it collapsed so um, for various reasons but now they, they got that power back. They got that, that military might back. That's their strength. All right, let's keep on reading. It says, um, and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses, horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, you know, weapons, modern day sword is the gun, right? It says, verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya with them all all uh, with them all with them all of them with shield and helmet so not only is Russia going to get into this war it's going to drag Persia which is modern day Iran uh, Ethiopia Libya these are all um, allies of Russia at some to some some degree and a lot of these nations are like in Africa these African nations they're they're siding with uh, Russia this is Gomer and all his and all his bands, the house of Togomar of the North Quarter, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So let me look up that word for guard. Be thou a guard unto them. That word for guard there is Mashamar, 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 which is a place of confinement a jail prison a guard a post act of guarding and that's what russia does it protects these nations so again something's going to happen where one of these nations could be a few of these nations but mainly i, I believe through spirit it's going to be iran because that's the big hotbed in the middle east you know the state of israel they really want to go to war with iran you know they, uh, this guy benjamin not a jew not a real jew he uh he's been stoking that fire against uh you know, Iran for a long time, you know, for, and he don't give no real reason except that they're state sponsors of terrorism, blah, 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 which they are. They all got proxy wars going on right now in the Middle East. Okay. But, you know, the state of Israel can attack Persia and it's going to draw all these people into um, war together. And again, Russia is a guard unto these different nations, right? So, so like it. So, Khan, I just typed up, uh, like explain who are Russia's allies a a list of countries supporting the Kremlin invasion of Ukraine so you got I just want to go right here it says um only Russia Belarus Syria rogue state North Korea Mali and Nicaragua and Eritrea voted against the resolution blah blah blah, blah. Iran Iran replenishing uh replen replenishing Russia arm stockpile so Iran which is Persia is a is a um a ally and you got north korea right syria right uh china big ally india mali right 
uh, Eritrea, which is in Ethiopia. Uh, it says the Moscow's led CSTO is a military alliance in Central Asia made up of six post Soviet states Armenia, Kazakhstan, Russia, Belarus, Tajikistan. Analysis of Russia and uh, yeah, so I couldn't really find too much, but hey, some of this stuff it points to the scriptures, like like Eritrea being a, a country in Ethiopia. So we got two of these countries already we could point to right now Persia, which is Iran, Ethiopia. Portions of Ethiopia, Eritrea, it's two separate countries, but they're the same people, man. And Libya, with them all, all of them be, uh, all of them with shell and helmet, Gomer and all his bands. The House of Togomar, when you look at who the House of Togomar is, we got um, Gog right here is Russia, uh, Gomer, uh, the, uh, Togomar, that's what I want. Togomar is Turkey, and we know that uh, Turkey is closely allied with Russia, okay? So this is going to start this world war that's fastly approaching, all right? Because this is what's going to kick off the nuclear destruction, ultimately destroying North America, America, all right? Via not only just Russia and its allies, but even America's allies are going to shoot missiles on them. The, the Ten Horns are going to hate the Horde for some reason. Something's going to pop. Okay? And when this war starts, what else is going to happen in the midst of that? Yahweh Shai is coming back. So these nations are not going to stand up. These nations are not going to defend themselves once they fall. They're done. This war is going to cripple uh, uh, nations all across the earth. Then the destruction of America definitely going to cripple um, these nations. Economics, um, trade, all of that is going to be crippled for good. And it's never going to come back up. It's going to fall. You know? And so here it is. These nations, they're preparing themselves to go to war with one another and it's really the Lord putting it on them because this is the Lord's judgment all right it ain't about uh, just uh, the Lord don't care about these nations man. these nations have de destroyed his people man which is us the Israelites so you got two major Edomite nations going to war with each other they can't stand that kingdom can't stand they're going to war with each other you got the Russians Edomites you got the American Edomites you got the, the small head Edomites you know, they, they just, they just, it's just a big ass infight, right? So they, they're destined to fall, and neither of them are are gonna um, renew their power or strength when it's time to go, right? Because this is the vengeance of the Lord. This is Micah five and fourteen. I will pluck up the, thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they, such as they have not heard. So here it is, the Lord is about to execute vengeance and anger and fury upon these nations, such as they've never heard before. How can they how can they rise again? How can they come back up again and, and, and fight this fight? Uh, especially against the Lord's people. You crazy? Against Yahweh Shah himself. Because we're gonna get into that. They try to fight the Lord, but it's a losing battle. Once you see Yahweh Shai, once you see the power of Yahweh Shai, that's a wrap. It ain't nothing they could do. Because it's far beyond any capabilities that they have on this earth. Okay? To fight against the Lord. Alright? It's it's completely out of order. They don't have it. They don't have the you can't fight against that. And then the remember the scripture says we're gonna be as the Lord is, so we're gonna be changed perfect like he is. So we're gonna be immortal. Who can fight against immortal people? You know what I'm saying? With superior not only superior technology but spiritual powers you know what i'm saying like you can't fight against that and that's and that's what these just and that's another reason why this man is going to go down because his pride and his 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 uh technology his resources his deceit his deception his pride it deceived him right so and when these Edomites go down, that means all Edomites go down. Not just the American Edomite, not just the small head Edomite, but the Russian Edomite too. They're out of here. And not only them, but all the nations. All the nations are going out. They're, 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 they're out of here. Right, this is the book of Obadiah. <clears throat> uh, one in, um, um, I'll start at one. The vision of Obadiah, it says Edom will be humble. That's right. 
the vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, concerning Edom, concerning Edom, Slaki, concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Right? Behold, I have made thee small amongst the heathen, thou art greatly despised. And these Edomites are extremely despised amongst the nations, man. The pride of thine heart, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cluster of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's that's the mindset. That's the mindset of the Edomites. So yeah, so that's the mindset of these Edomites that they can't fall. Right? But again, let me get this preset real quick. Um, um, scripture says, this is the book of, um, well, it's written in a couple places, uh, but this is the Matt, St. Matthew 12 and 25, right? St. Matthew 12 and 25. See Matthew 12 and 25, it says, And Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Right? And the Edomite nation is divided. It's, they got subgroups, man. You got the religious, so called religious Edomites, claiming to be the Lord's people. And they're secular. They don't even believe in the Lord. Or the Heavenly Father, they're atheists, right? And you got the Russian Edomite, right? And they're against the American Edomite, right? See, America has fooled the, the world. How you believe in that? Everybody that's living in America, like, oh, you're an, you're an American, you're an American, you know? And you might be, as far as citizenship is, but when you look at, when you think about America, you ain't thinking about uh, um, Jake's like that. You ain't thinking about the other nations. You thinking about the so-called white man. And, they, and these are two, this is one kingdom, and they're divided against themselves. So they can't stand. They're not going to stand. Right? They're going to fall. All right? And when they fall, the Lord is going to use, first and foremost, the heavenly father, Yahweh is going to use his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, as the exactor of his vengeance. And then the Lord is going to use the elect Israelite men. Right? So this is the part of the Lord's vengeance. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 13. I'm going to start at 1. And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night, which this is a vision. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And that man is Haushai, right? And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. So how in the world can God, how? How can I don't care how much power these Edomites got? When they see the Lord, they're gonna know it's him, bro. Every every knee shall bow. It don't matter. Every every head, every knee shall bow when the Howard Shire returns. And when you and they were already scared of him when they seen him. Wherever he looked, they were shook. They trembled under him. So there's no way that God is gonna return the, the, the Edomite Russians. The Russian Edomites are gonna try to fight against the Lord. They're going to try to fight against his elect. Lord, we're we part of the elect when we come out in their new bodies. But they're going to lose. And then we're going to burn all their weapons up, and they're going to have nothing. Right? They're going to have no, they, they're going to have no scientists amongst them. They're going to have no smiths amongst them. They're going to have no engineers amongst them to try to engineer a comeback. Ain't no comeback. You're out of here. You're done. The Lord sent his only begotten son. There's nobody can beat that. Right? Nobody can beat that. It says, And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Right? And it says, And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. So like this. And it says, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of here, bro. It says, and after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of the number 
from the four winds of heaven to subdue that man they came out of the sea. So here it is, these nations, once they seen the Lord, they start fighting each other. This right here basically was put on hope with one another. And they turned around and they tried to fight the Lord. And that's just a losing battle. You ain't gonna win that battle. And it's gonna sell you. It's gonna it's gonna tell you. Right? It says and and, that, and after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men of out of the number from four from the four winds of the heaven to subdue that man that came out of the sea. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it, and that great mountain was a chariot. He flew right on top of it, man. Come on, man. But I would have seen the region or place where where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, yet they durst fight. So here it is, you see the Lord himself, you see how shy himself. These people were afraid to fight him. So what make you think that these people are going not gonna be afraid to fight us? His people. Because the Lord, remember the Lord said he's going to make us as he is, man. That same terror and dread that the nations have, that we all going to have when we see Yahweh Shai, is the same dread and terror that these nations going to have when they see an Israelite. All right? Okay? And we're going to make them fight. Like the Lord made like the Lord made these nations fight him when they saw him. Like they ain't, they ain't pack it up and say, you know what, we good. No, they, they, they got emboldened to fight the Lord, even though they were scared. Even though they were scared. Okay? It said, yet there is fight. And it says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lift up his hand, nor held a sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue, and he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell fell with violence upon a multitude, which was prepared to fight, and burnt them up every one, so that upon of a sudden, in a new multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Yeah. So here it is, the Lord, he straight Thanos, he straight Thanos the nations, man. What he just hit them with a laser beam, and they just all these all these multitudes of airplanes and jets and drones and who and the soldiers that were uh, pilots that were set up to fight against them, they were all eviscerated in one stroke. Right, so <laughs> that's terrifying, man. That is terrifying. Nobody's gonna fight against that, and they're gonna know they can't fight against that power. Right? Remember the Lord said we're gonna be as He is. This is Jeremiah fifty-one twenty-one. And with thee will I break in pieces the horses and his rider. Matter of fact, I'll start at 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. The Lord said he's going to break the nations in pieces by us. Nothing they can do. The Edomite, the Edomite Russian, the Russian Edomite ain't going to bounce back. Right? The, 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 the American Edomite is going to be done. He's going to be eviscerated. The super elite, they're not going to be able to bounce back. And we're coming for them first. We're coming for them. Lord, when we part of the elect, we're coming for them. The Lord's going to thou with thou art my battle axe and weapons, weapons of war. Right? So we're going to be we're going to be a, a extraterrestrial weapon, bro. You know, like Weapon X. Yeah, you know, like they call uh, they that, that was Wolverine's name. <laughs> weapon X unknown. What X mean an unknown? Uh, it's an unknown weapon. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. So, so the Lord is going to use us to destroy these kingdoms. He's going to destroy their armies. He's going to destroy their leadership. And they're done. He's going to destroy their bashing of glory, which is America. They're done. Moscow's going to be hit. Portions of Russia's going to be hit and destroyed. Facts, you know. All the leadership going to go underground, hiding like rats. And we're going to get them. And with thee will I break in pieces the horses and his rider and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider right and uh, the NLT says with you I will shatter armies destroying the horses and rider the chariot and the charioteer so here it is <laughs> the, the Russian army ain't finna bounce back they're not finna they're gonna be shattered they're gonna be destroyed right the Lord's gonna destroy their, their, their air forces all their air forces 
You gonna destroy them, right? Then what? What you got? You got no. You got no airplanes. You got no fighter jets. They ain't gonna help you. And your your land troops are gonna get eviscerated. Come on, man. And the Lord's gonna he gonna weaponize us, man. All right. It's going back into uh, Second Edward chapter thirteen, right? Uh, verse twelve. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him and other a peaceable multitude. This is the elect. All right. Afterward, um, afterward came much people unto him. Wherefore, some were some were glad, some were sorry. Some of them were bound. Others, some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I and I awakened and said, Thou has thou has showed thy servant wonders from the beginning, and has counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Right. Show me now the interpretation of this dream. Well, let's read. Let's read the interpretation. It says, For I conceive and my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. Right? Because this is going to be a fearful sight. For they that were not left were in heaviness. Right? Now understand I, I the things that are laid up in the latter days, and they were in those latter days, okay, which shall happen unto them. And to those that are left behind. It says, Therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities, like as these in the dream declared. Right? Uh, that, that's pretty much it on that. I ain't got to read no more. You, you brothers can read this chapter, but the point of the matter is that these nations are not going to um, fight against the Lord, Yahweh Shai, and, and again, after he destroys them, they're not going to have that strength anymore. The Lord's going to. Uh, eviscerate their strength, which is their military, and I wanted to read it in the um, the uh, the GNT because it was just as good, right? And it says, uh, I'll start at thirteen. It says, uh, I'll start at twelve. This is uh, Second Edges thirteen and twelve in the GNT. Then I saw the man come down from the mountain and call another large crowd unto him. This this was a peace and loving crowd. That's the elect. Matter of fact, let me start up. Right, and it's verse 8. Then I saw that all the people who had come together to make war against them were terrified, but they still prepared, but they still prepared to fight them. Yep. It says, when the man saw the great crowd advancing to attack him, he did not take up any weapons. The only thing I saw was what looked like a stream of fire. This is a laser beam coming out of his mouth, and he sent a flaming wind from his lips and a storm and sparks from his tongue the stream of fire the flaming wind and a great storm combined and swept down on the crowd that was coming to attack him and burned them all up in a single moment the crowd too large to count vanished and there was nothing left but powder ashes and a smell of smoke i was shocked when i saw what happened then I, then i saw the man come down from the mountain and call another large crowd un to come to him this was a peace, peace-loving crowd, and that peace-loving crowd is the elect. So here it is. After you didn't see Yahweh Shai, you eviscerate your armies. They try to attack him. You try to attack the Lord's only begotten Son, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh's only begotten Son. You're, 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 you're bound for destruction. You're doomed, right? They show you all these fan, fan, uh, fanciful movies, Avengers. Ain't no Avengers in Esau's art, uh, artillery. He don't got no Avengers, right? The Revenger is coming, and that's your outer shot, right? And the true X Men are going to get raised up with every conceivable power, and even ones that you can't conceive of. Ain't just uh, Jake gonna have one power, or you can just fly, you can just run fast, but he's he's not impervious to bullets. Nah, nah, we're gonna have we're gonna be on a super high level like your Howard shot, right? All sorts of people came. Some were happy, some were sad, some had their hands and feet tied. Some of them brought others as gifts to the Lord. I was also so frightened that I woke up. I prayed to the Most High and said, Lord, you have been showing me all these marvelous things. You have considered me worthy and have heard my prayers. Man. And if you can't see it, that means you're not worthy. If you can't see these things that Yahweh Shai is explicitly saying to us through the scriptures, through the word, then you're not worthy. But if you can see it, then you are worthy. Right? So I just wanted to bring this out. Uh, nation's not going to be able to fight against Yahweh Shai. It's a wrap.
Dempsey, Shalawan, on to the next.